Hello again. Thanks for joining me. You know, we're looking in the book of Revelation and coming up to the, the unfolding vision that John was having of the Antichrist. And what we've been doing for the last few videos is just looking at some of the other scriptures that verify the reality of this Antichrist. And we're going to be looking at Paul's foreview of the coming of the Antichrist. So if you have your Bible, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 says, No one is to deceive you in any way, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first, or the, the departure. And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. Do you not remember that while I was still with you, I was telling you these things? And you know what restrains him now, so that he will be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is removed. Then that lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will eliminate with the breath of his mouth and bring to an end by the appearance of his coming. That is, the one whose coming is in accord with the activity of Satan, with all power and false signs and wonders, and with all the deception of wickedness for those who perish because they did not accept the love of the truth so as to be saved. Here Paul calls the Antichrist, here the, the man of lawlessness, and the son of destruction. Man of lawlessness, referring to the idea that he's coming out of the lawlessness that is going to increase upon the earth. But look at that phrase right there, the son of destruction. The Antichrist being called the son of destruction is a very unique term. So unique that someone being called the son of destruction is only found in one other place in the Bible. And do you know who that is? The Antichrist is called the son of destruction. Now, the other person called that is Judas Iscariot. If you turn in your Bible to um, the writings of John, he says, While I was with them, I was keeping them in your name, which you have given me, and I guarded them, and not one of them perished except the son of destruction, so that the scripture would be fulfilled. So, the Antichrist is called the son of destruction, and Judas Iscariot is called the son of destruction. Not a son, but the, which gives an idea that there's only one. Now, as we look at that passage right there, as well in 2 Thessalonians, Paul called, uh, referred to all of this season as the mystery of lawlessness. So that's a very unique thing right there. The mystery of lawlessness is the mystery of the coming of the Antichrist. Now, think about that. There's one other mystery revealed in the Bible called the mystery of godliness. And that's a reference to Jesus. So one is an, a reference to the Antichrist, a mystery of lawlessness, and Jesus is referred to as a mystery of godliness. Here's what it says in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Gr beyond question, great is the mystery of godliness. He who was revealed in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in the world, and taken up into glory. See, the mystery of godliness is that God was revealed in the flesh. God became flesh. The mystery of godliness is the incarnation of God in flesh. The, the mystery of lawlessness is the incarnation of Satan in the flesh. So remember that if you, as you think about all of this. Now, you, you just say, wait a minute, are you saying that the Antichrist is Satan in flesh? Let me read for you Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, where it says to us that the, the, the seed of the woman would crush the seed of Satan, the seed of the devil. So Satan someday will have a seed that Jesus, who is the seed, of God in flesh will crush the other seed. Jesus said this in John chapter 8, verse 44. You are of your father the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he tells a lie, he speaks from his own nature because he is a liar and the father of... And actually, if you look at there, the definite article is given throughout there. He's called the lie. 
Satan is the father of the lie. Second Thessalonians that we just read in verse 11 right after it says, For this reason God will send upon them a deluding spirit so that they will believe. And here again we find in the original language the lie. They will believe the Antichrist. Satan is called the father of the lie, the father of the Antichrist. So now let's look at another verse here in John chapter 6, reading in verse 70 to 71. Jesus said to them, Did I myself not choose you the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. Now he meant Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, for he, one of the twelve, was going to betray him. If you look at that, it's the only time a human being is called the word diabolos, and it's used for Judas Iscariot. Judas is called, now in your translation there in the New American Standard, it might say a devil, but it actually says, Isn't he the devil? Judas Iscariot is called the devil. The Antichrist is called the devil. They are one and the same. Is there more than one son of destruction that's described here? Revelation 11 verse 7 says this, When they had finished their testimony, the beast that comes out of the abyss and will make war with them and overcome them and kill them. It's saying here that the Antichrist is going to kill the two witnesses will come up out of the abyss. When did the Antichrist get into the abyss? Now I'm going to wrap it up with this. When Judas Iscariot hung himself, the apostles came together to find his replacement. Because here's what it says in Acts 1.24. They prayed and said, Lord, you know the hearts of all people. Show which one of these two you have chosen to become the replacement for Judas Iscariot to occupy this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. Never in the Bible once did it describe a man who died, was, died to go to his own place. What was his own place that, that Judas Iscariot very possibly was sent to? He was sent to the abyss, and he will not come out of the abyss until halfway through the tribulation period. Revelation 17, verse 8 says this, The beast that you saw come out of the abyss, he was. Well, when was he? He was here when Judas Iscariot was here. And he is not. Why is he not? Because Judas Iscariot died, went into the abyss, and now he is about to come out of the abyss and go to destruction, because he's called the son of destruction. Listen, I'm not willing to go to the wall over this, but isn't it interesting, only two are called the son of destruction, Judas Iscariot and the Antichrist. The, Judas goes to his own place when he dies, and halfway through the tribulation period, the Antichrist comes out of the abyss, and he was, and then he was not, and now he is again on the earth. Just an interesting study, and I lay that out for you.